Hey guys, this is Jake here from Canadian Cutting Edge, and uh, I'm just using this microphone this time. Let's see if it's going to help. Uh, this is the Sidus. This is uh, probably a sibling of the Terra, made by the same designer. It's got a bit of the similar kind of shape. Uh, you can get this thing with carbon fiber shred, carbon fiber. And now they've got it with G10 as well, if you need to save a few bucks. And uh, the blade's about the same on the different versions. Now the ones that have the Sidus, uh, it is the Sidus, the ones that have the shredded uh, carbon fiber, you can get them several different ways. You can get it just shredded carbon fiber. You can get shredded carbon fiber with some copper in there. Uh, this one, is a limited edition with White Mountain Knives. It's the shredded carbon fiber with the blue luminescence. And uh, other vendors have the green luminescence. There's different ways to get these knives at different places. This one is uh, a limited edition at White Mountain Knives only, but the dimensions, the function of the knife, how well it works, it's gonna be the same across all of them, no matter where you buy them. So. The only difference being either carbon fiber or G10. If you're interested in a folding knife that's got a hole for deployment, you might be interested in the Sidus. So stick around, the full reviews come in right now. As I said in the introduction, uh, this is the Terra. Both of these knives are by uh, Poltergeist Works. And uh, it's sort of like the sibling. They're very similar. Even uh, on the Real Steel's website, you know, they say that these are basically similar designs with just a little bit of a take on each other. So uh, that's pretty good. I like to do a size comparison. Uh, the Sidus is a little smaller than the Terra compared to the Ontario Rat 1, though. We've got the handle's a little bit smaller and the blade's a little bit shorter. The cutting edge length, though, like we often find on the Ontario Rat, uh, the other knives that we look at are often longer cutting edge. Uh, and this one's the same way. It's got a longer cutting edge than the Ontario Rat. And uh, if you don't count this forward section, you know, the handle lengths, they're not that dissimilar. They're actually fairly close. So, like I said, there's their logo, D2 Steel on this guy. The um, hole that they cut in here, it's got little steps in it. Hopefully the close-up shot can show that, and I'll try to bring it a little closer here. There's some guys with much more skill than I to have that put their finger underneath and they flick it out, and so they can make the blade fly out with authority. Uh, that's not me. Even if it's well balanced and everything, it's just not me. So for me, a one-hand opening is like that for this knife. <laughs> so that's just the way it is for me. We've got a really nice sharpness choil. They did a good job with that. Made it no bigger than necessary. Uh, the tip has got, you know, the taper starts right around here down to the tip. So it's a nice fine tip. Very good for doing precision work if you need to do a little precision cutting. It's pretty much all belly except for the last little bit right there. So it's a great slicing knife. The uh, chipping here on the thumb rest is not too aggressive. It's just good enough so that you can get a good solid grip on it. Uh, the edges aren't sharp. Um, I keep getting questions sometimes, even on folding knives, if you can strike a ferro rod with the sides of these knives. No. <laughs> If you can, I'll tell you, <laughs> but for the most part, no. Folding knives, they don't make the spine with a sharp little corner on it, or edge on it. The, uh, there's a big difference here with the lanyard option. It's almost like some other knives, not quite, but I like that it's in a little bit, so it's smaller. And uh, if you do use paracord, it doesn't bulge up out around it. And yet it doesn't affect you know any of the different grips on it. You put your thumb in here, um, you know a reverse grip like this, very comfortable. A reverse pull grip, 
quite comfortable in the hands too. And just your basic grips are quite good. Uh, very comfortable in the, in the hand. Uh, the uh, carbon fiber is milled smooth. It's got a nice radius, a 3D shape here. It's not flat on the sides. Then you've got a nice chamfer there. There's a nice chamfer on the spine here as well. Well-rounded, so it's very comfortable in hand. You've got these screws here. They call them double torque screws. Um, I didn't check if they are T25 or what the number is. I'll, I'll get the number what these are and I'll put it on the screen right here for taking them apart. To take this knife apart, it's a little bit easier if you've got some kind of vise. Uh, I got this vise a long time ago and it's just very handy, especially with these rubber grips here. I can just put uh, the knife in and have it held in place. And with these, this knife, you know, there's flats on this side. So I'll put a flat screwdriver on here to stop it from turning. And this side actually matches my tool for my Hapstone sharpeners. So that's perfect. That's an Allen key. You can also use a Torx key. And uh, there you go. It comes loose like that. And it's the side with the flats that comes out. So I'll do this side here. Except for I don't like turning the flats along. It's very easy to use a screwdriver to scratch up the side of your carbon fiber if you have to turn a knife with a flat over it. What do I mean? Well, I'll show you what I mean. Now, when you use, you're trying to undo this, and if you got a flat in there and you're spinning it around, it's very easy to get this off and start to scratch into the surface of the knife right there. We got to zoom in just a little bit for this. Okay, so those are out. Take these off. Comes apart easily enough if I move it a little bit. There you go. So there you go. You can see all that skeletonizing. Uh, it doesn't have ball bearings, but it's got very thin phosphor bronze and then some Teflon. And you get that on each side. And that's all that it needs to get really, really smooth action. And uh, I like it quite a lot that way. It just works really, really well. And here's your colored backspacer. Or not your colored. This The luminescence it lumin, it luminesces in blue on this one. It's got a ceramic detent ball and good smooth action. And yeah, you can see I've carried it for a little while. It's got a little bit dirty. Uh, I use my knives. Okay, well, now I'll put it all back together again. It's fairly highly skeletonized. Uh, I wish it would be a little more skeletonized or that the liners would be a little thinner. Why? Because the balance point is there. And if the handle was a little bit lighter, the balance point could be here. Which, if the whole thing was a little bit lighter, I don't know, I think more people would be attracted to it. It's not heavy by any stretch, it's just barely over four ounces. So, you know, it's not a heavy, heavy knife, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty good knife. Pocket clip is right side, deep carry only. And uh, there's enough space there between the screw heads and the body of the uh, pocket clip that it doesn't get caught on pants. Let's demonstrate how well it works. So the uh, head of the uh, pocket clip easily climbs over and it just goes full depth very easily every single time that I've tried it. So you just got a little bit of that handle sticking out of the knife. I like how real steel often uses uh, pocket clips that are a little bit smaller than you would think that they would be. So that's kind of good. I lock up is nice. It's almost exactly where I want it to be when it's brand new. The lock arm release has got that jimping on it that we often see in real steel knives. I like that an awful lot. It's very easy to get a good positive uh, grip on there with your thumb to close the blade. Blade alignment when it's closed is, you know, pretty close to perfect if you ask me. I like that quite a lot. And uh, it looks really good. 
let's show you what it looks like after I've left the carbon fiber in the sun and then I go into a dark place. So I had it in the sun for a couple of minutes and uh, there you go. That's what it looks like. This side didn't get much sunlight. This was facing away from the sun, so that's just mildly charged. And that side was facing the sunlight a bit better. And, you know, the back, it's got that blue. That's my thumb rubbing across it. So it looks pretty good. I'll turn one of these lights on here. So there you go. That's what it looks like when the lights are on. So there you go. I think it's a very, very good knife. Let's go over all of the dimensions and specs and that kind of information. It is 120 grams. That is four and a quarter ounces. Not bad at all. The factory edge here was the sharpness rating 145 best. That's very good. The blade length and the cutting edge length are the same. 8.9 centimeters, three and a half inches. So it is a full size folder. The uh, blade thickness, 3.06 millimeters. That's 0 0.1205 inches. So just a tiniest bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, and I usually measure it about an inch up from the sharpener's trial. So right about here, sort of where this word steel is on real steel. And that is 2.75 centimeters, just over an inch, 1.08. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right here, again, pretty close to perfect, 0.49 millimeters. That's 19 and a half thousandths of an inch. So very much like I like a knife like this to be. The grind angle, oh, I did it again. I forgot to take the grind angle measurement. So I'll take the grind angle measurement and then leave the information on the screen right here. Usually D2 is around 20 degrees per side. So you can compare that with the findings that they had, that I had. The handle length, it's 11.75 centimeters, 4.63 inches. The grip area in here, it's around, uh, you know, almost 11 centimeters, 4.3 inches, something like that, just under 11 centimeters. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is actually closer to the belly. And then up here in the spine, it starts getting less. So right about here is where the thickest spot is across here. And that is uh, 1.55 centimeters, 0.61 of an inch. So it's not a skinny little knife, but it's not obese either. It's not a big fat knife, especially with this little pocket clip. It, it helps stay small in the hand. The handle depth, that's this measurement, 2.95 centimeters, 1.16 inches. When you close the knife, the uh, biggest measurement is actually, that's, yeah, it actually, this is right here a little bit, wider than back here. So up here it's 3.1 centimeters, 1.22 inches. So 1.16 inches, 1.22, very close to the same. It's just a tiny bit bigger here. The total length of this knife is 20.6 centimeters. And yeah, boy, boy, I guess I didn't do all this. I forgot to do the conversion into inches. So let's see. In inches, it's an inch and an eighth. How much does this knife cost? Well, it really depends on where you go. This specific one with the blue in here, it's only at White Mountain Knives, $64.99. So $65 US dollars for this knife. Um, take off 10% and it's $58.49. You take off 10% when you use coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. Uh, other knives with the carbon fiber, depends on where you go. You can find them in the low 70s into the 80s and higher. Um, I did find a store in Canada that's got this, uh, Blades Canada, also known as Warriors and Wonders. Uh, they have it, uh, I think it's a hundred, they don't have this specific model, but the carbon fiber one shredded is $112.99 Canadian and the G2, G10 version is $99.99. It costs a fair bit more in Canada than it does in the United States, even with the current exchange rate situation. Um, over $30 Canadian difference, you know, and then you still have to add shipping on from both places, I guess. So depends on where you want to get it from. Um, if you buy from Canada, you know, you do have uh, not any worries about if it's going to be able to get into Canada or not. But I've found every single time I bought from White Mountain Knives still, 
every single time the package has gotten through to me here in Alberta, no problem whatsoever. And when you factor in the savings over a long period of time, you know, the odd loss to Canada Customs, you know, it would still be cheaper. But you might not be a guy like me. You might only buy a knife, you know, once or twice a year. And for you, it might be smarter just to buy it from a Canadian source. Uh, if I find this on Amazon, I'll put the links down below as well. So going over, I like this uh, double torque screw kind of thing. So you got this hollow pin through there. Just It's a nice way to mount it together and create a pivot pin. It's decent, add style and look and flair. It's, that's good. I really like the shredded carbon fiber. That's a really good look. Full flat grind on a drop point. You could put almost any kind of decent steel on here, you know, D2 or, you know, 14C28N or, you know, even 12C27. It still would be really good because just the design of it. It's a very good slicing machine. And good texture here for grip. There's a little bit of grip here on this uh, backspacer, some jipping in there. Lanyard's good. And it's a snug, well designed knife. What do you like or not like? I wish there was a left side pocket clip for my lefty friends. Uh, I grew up left handed, but using knives over all these years, I've actually become better with my right hand and pocket knives than I am with my left now. So that's, uh, but I still care about my lefty friends. I do wish there was more left hand stuff out there. Uh, maybe a stonewash blade would be a good option. I think that would go good with the, uh, you know, shredded carbon fiber. But it looks good this way too. So, so many different options, so many different good looks, and so many different materials. If you're a Patreon supporter, I'm going to do a random draw of your names in a few days, and one of you is going to win their choice of a of what I reviewed in the previous month. With a very, very minor exception, one or two exceptions of knives that I keep for myself. So, thanks so much, friends, for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.